thank you. Thank you very much. Thank you for the kind introduction and thank you for the invitation to be here. It's really a pleasure for me to, to talk uh, about Nextprod today. So for those of you who don't know uh, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics, uh, it's, a, it's a, an institute uh, with uh, now uh, around 80 groups working both in research in bioinformatics and also providing services and uh, infrastructure for, uh, for the bioinformatics community. And uh, so this institute is spread all over Switzerland and we are based in Geneva here. And maybe you know uh, the Swiss Institute of Bioinformatics in Geneva because uh, uh, there is the Swiss Prod group there developing Swiss Prod since 86. And uh, together with Amos, who funded uh, Swiss Prod in 86, we created Nextprod uh, in 2011, because at this time, uh, there were a lot of data uh, about human proteins coming from um, omics projects, and Uniprod could not cope with this data. So it was transcriptomic data, genomic data, uh, these uh, thousand genome projects, uh, and proteomics data. And Uniprod, with the current format that they had at this time could not take this data and so we created Nextprod to cope with that. Uh, since 2011 we had uh, about 40 different uh, colleagues working in the group and currently uh, the, the, the team is, um, uh, the, 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 these are the people in the team and I'm not myself a programmer but I rely on those, uh, this very efficient developer team um, uh, and, and then we present you uh, what they have done uh, now. So, uh, what we are doing is that we take uh, Uniprot corpus of human proteins. So all the information that is on human proteins in Uniprot will be also in Nextprot. And to this corpus of data, we add a lot of information Genomic information, for example, variants coming and their frequencies coming from Genome AD or from COSMIC, a cancer mutation database. We take transcriptomic information that is reanalyzed by a group, another SIP group in Lausanne, which is called BG. And we take uh, proteomics data from Peptide Atlas from, and antibody-based data from the Human Protein Atlas, and also some PTM data, for example, uh, gly glycosylation data analyzed by Glyconnect, which is also a SIP group. And because we, ta we, we take all this information in addition to Uniprot for human proteins, we have a better coverage than Uniprot for many different things. So for example, for protein-protein interactions here, for expression data, um, for PTMs, we have a little bit more. And for peptide, uh, so mass spectrometry data and antibody-based data are not at all in Uniprot and you have them in Nextprot. So in numbers, because we, we take as a basis uh, the, the protein corpus of data that is in Uniprot, we have the exact same number of entries that, uh, than in Uniprot, but we have uh, um, more data. And for example, we have now in the, in the last release more than six million variants and nearly 2 million uh, peptides coming from mass spectrometry experiments. Um, all this data uh, is um, uh, organized in a, in a RDF model. So for those of you who don't know what is RDF, uh, an RDF data model is based on statements and each statement is a triple and a triple is made of a subject, a predicate and an object. So for example, the sky has a color blue, would be a triple. Of course, our data is a little bit more complicated than this kind of uh, predicate, but still we managed to have everything in RDF. And the way we organize the data is that all the annotations are um, uh, attached, not to a gene or to an entry, but to a, a splice form so that allows some granularity of the information. So for example, if you have one gene uh, giving two or three different splice forms, and each splice forms has a different function or a different subcellular localization, then this information can, can be captured. So it, were, it was important for us from the very beginning 
to have this possibility of attaching annotation not to an entry but to an isoform. At the moment, the experimental data does not allow to have a lot of ISO, really isoform specific data, but we hope that such data will come in the future and, and we will be uh, possible to, to differentiate functions and locations and PTM and everything at this level of granularity. Uh, our, our annotations uh, can be either um, experimental or predicted from model organisms or from any kind of uh, bioinformatics analysis. And um, there are of two different types. You have the general annotations, which concerns, for example, the role of the protein or the location of the protein. And you have what we call the positional annotations that are attached to a single position in the sequence. So for example, a variant, a PTM, a motif. So those are po sequence positional annotations. And all these annotations are, are um, uh, modeled using uh, controlled vocabularies, which are strictly controlled uh, so that all our data can be easily inter interoperable with other uh, resources. And we try uh, to, put, to, to give the evidence and the source of every single data point that we have in the database to allow for a full traceability of our data. So for all these reasons, uh, in 2013, uh, the HUPO Human Proton Project chose NextProt to be the reference knowledge base for the, for the project. So what is this uh, Human Proton Project from HUPO? Uh, it's a big project with uh, maybe 1,000 people involved. And the goal is to map uh, the, the human proteome, a bit like the Human Genome Project before, and to validate the existence of all the, the proteins that were predicted by the human genome analysis, and to characterize those proteins, to find PTMs on them, to find their function, to find where they are, and so on and so forth. So, but the very first step of this project was really to simply, simply, to validate the existence of every single predicted protein from the genome analysis in any human sample. And uh, as the reference knowledge base of this project, what we have to do is to integrate the data that is produced by this consortium <coughs> to provide dedicated viewers and tools to help them doing their job, uh, to export the data in relevant uh, formats. And for example, we were the first to implement the HUPO PSI PEF format that was uh, developed uh, by HUPO PSI. Uh, so all the PTM and variant annotation that we have can be uh, retrieved using this format. And each year we provide annual metrics to monitor the, the, the progresses of this project. So as I told you, the, the first uh, uh, objective of HPP is to, it's to validate the existence of human proteins in, in human samples. And uh, to do that, the, the HPP community uh, had, has decided, has made guidelines uh, um, saying that a protein is considered to be validated by mass spectrometry if two unique peptides of at least nine amino acids that are non-nested have been found in uh, a human sample. So what we do in NextProt is that we take uh, the mass spectrometry data that has been generated by the community in general and of course also by the HPP investigators that were submitted to Proteome Exchange and reanalyzed by Eric's group uh, and the TPP pipeline. And then, so we, we received from them uh, 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 hundreds of thousands of peptides. We integrate them in NextProt and then we apply these guidelines and we assign a score to proteins saying this protein has been confidently identified or not based on these guidelines. So we did that uh, in the past years. Last year, uh, we applied the same guidelines. And each year, we provide this kind of metrics saying how many uh, uh, proteins have been validated for each chromosome. And in the last uh, release of NextProt, there were still uh, about 10% of the protein that is still lacking any validation at protein level. So this is what we have been doing for several years now. Uh, this year, we will 
we are doing the same, except that HPP came with, uh, so except two things. The first thing is that we, we will take not only peptide atlas data, but also data reanalyzed by the massive uh, pipeline. And then uh, we will uh, assign, we will validate a protein if the two peptides come only from either peptide atlas or from massive. So we, we, it's a slight a modification of the guidelines that were, that were published this year and that, we will, that will be applied in the release that is expected to come in, a, in one month. So in the, in the next release that is coming soon, you will have this massive data and this peptide atlas integrated. And so the number of peptides will be uh, nearly the double of, uh, of what, what is already in Nexprot now. Uh, and we also updated uh, Nexprot with the new Uniprot and new HPA uh, data. So that will be soon available. So now what is, in, uh, how can you access data and what exactly uh, can you find in, in the Nexprot database? So Nexprot can be accessed uh, via different uh, oops, uh, ways. The first of course is that we have a, a website. We have a FTP site where there are a lot of uh, different interesting things. And uh, we have uh, uh, developed an API and a Sparkle endpoint and I, I will come back to that a bit later. Uh, for what, what we have developed for, as tools for the HPP communities are mainly two. Uh, the first one is a tool allowing to check the unicity of uh, the peptides in the human proteome. Because as I told you, one of the, gui the most important guidelines for validating proteins for the HPP is to have two uniquely mapping peptides identified. And uh, so we needed a tool to, to, to know if one peptide uh, from, from a, a mass spec experiment was uh, or not unique uh, in Nexprot. So we have developed a tool uh, which allows to make this analysis uh, for uh, at least in, the, in this uh, website for uh, 1000 peptides at once and it's in, in seconds you have the unicity uh, results. And this tool uh, has two options. One is to consider not to consider any variants, any genomic variants, to, to check for the unicity of the peptide. And one, another option is to consider the 6 million variants that we have in Nexprot to, to check if some peptides would lose their unicity if we, we take into consideration those variants. So for example, here, we, I know that you don't see a lot, but we have three peptides. One is unique whether or not you consider the variants. One is uh, unique if you don't consider the variants, but if you put the variants into the equation, it loses the unicity. And one is not unique at all because it can be mapped to, to a lot of different entries. So that tool is now quite uh, used by the community and we use it ourselves to make our release each year. Then we, were, uh, we have also um, uh, put uh, available another tool uh, which allows, if you are very interested in, uh, in validating one given protein and you, you, you want to, to, uh, to be sure that with one enzyme you will, find, you will be able to find two peptides, two unique peptides. Uh, so uh, you, we provide theoretical digestion profiles with, uh, a lot of, with 27 different enzymes. And uh, so for example, this uh, entry here has no, pept no triptych peptide, but would have two unique peptides if you use GLUC uh, here. And, and then it tells, this tool tells you if the peptides, the the theoretical peptide generated are already in Nexprot or not. So we hope that it will be used by, by the HPP uh, in, the, in, the in the future. So that, that was for the tools and then for the data, the data is uh, made available on, uh, on this uh, interface, this Nexprot interface. Uh, and each protein entry has different views depending on what you are interested in. So you have a medical view, for example, an interaction view, uh, localization view, uh, and so on. So it's not like in Uniprot where you have all in one single uh, page. Uh, so the sequence view uh, allows to answer questions such as uh, for this protein, what variants and what PTMs are known and are they located in, 
given functional domains, active sites, and so on. So the view is made of uh, three different panels like that, one, two, three, and they are interactively connected. So if I click here, then automatically I will have this position in the feature table and highlighted on the sequence there. And for each position selected here, I, I will have all the data. So here it's a PTM, it's a phosphorylation. And if I click here on the evidence, I will have all the evidence for this particular phosphorylation with uh, a lot of um, annotated metadata uh, on this particular phosphorylation site. And we also have here a search functionality. And so for example, here, if I look for a particular genome ID identifier, I will immediately found, find the variant uh, here uh, with a link to the, um, the genome ID database and the frequency of the variant coming from the genome ID database. So it's quite rich in information and it's uh, quite used now uh, as a viewer of information. The proteomics view uh, is uh, built on the same principle here, but we, here we show also the peptides that have been identified for a given protein and the, the antibodies uh, that, the epitopes of the antibodies that were um, uh, produced, that are produced against this protein. Uh, yeah, and for each peptide, of course, we provide, um, uh, we, we, we provide information about its uniqueness in the human proteome and metadata about the sample in which it was um, found, and also link to peptide atlas for the peptide atlas peptides. We also have an expression view of the protein, uh, which shows you where the protein is expressed, both at mRNA and at protein level. So mRNA expression data is mainly uh, RNA-seq data uh, from HPA, and protein expression data is mainly immunohistochemistry data also from HPA. And we have this table here uh, showing for each tissue, uh, allowing to compare for each tissue data at mRNA level and data at protein expression level. So the sequence viewer, the feature viewer, the, the, and the heat map table that we use for the expression view are all um, freely available JavaScript components that can be freely reused. And if you go uh, in GitHub, for example, you can just take the source code and, uh, and fork them for any other project. Then I told you that we have an APA to retrieve Nextpot contents. Uh, it's also accessible uh, uh, here. And we have a lot of documentation about this APA that you can find in our technical corner. And, uh, and that allows basically to retrieve any uh, any data from, from Nextprot. Now in the second part of my talk, I want to, to talk you more about how to search information in Nextprot because uh, up to now I, I told you what is in Nextprot and how it is displayed, but how can we search for this information? So in Nextprot we have two different search modes, the, a simple search and an advanced search. So basically the simple search is like a Google search and it allows to, uh, to search for proteins, but also for publications that were used to, to annotate data. And also it's quite convenient to search for terms, uh, ontology terms. So for example, if I, I search for liver, I have all the, the different liver terms in different ontologies that can be compared. But if you want to do some precise protein search, this simple search is not sufficient. So we developed another uh, search tool, which is based on Sparkle. Sparkle is a language to query data that is in RDF. Um, and so we developed this advanced search functionality that is in the main interface of Nextprot and which allows only to, to search for proteins. So that's the advent. So when you are on the home page, you click on advanced search, and then you can write your Sparkle query. So, for example, here uh, the, I, I was looking for proteins phosphorylated and located in the cytoplasm. It's a, it's a quite simple Sparkle query here. As I told you before, because the model is uh, centered on isoforms, you have to all the, the annotations are attached to isoform. So you have to to ask for an isoform in an entry, and that isoform have, has to have the, the 
keyword phosphorylation and the subcellular location cytoplasm. So that's a quite simple example. Uh, another example would be uh, a, a query to, to find the proteins that were not, that have not been validated yet in the human proteome. So it's also a quite simple query here that immediately gives you the list of uh, 2,129 proteins that are still to be validated in human samples by the HPP community. Uh, and uh, because we know that the end user uh, does not know to write a query from scratch, we want to help the, the user. And, to do, and so we have pre-written 140 Sparkle queries uh, quite different uh, in, uh, in their scope, so, and, and they are freely available, and, and the user can take them, customize them uh, to their needs. So, for example, here, uh, proteins which have been detected in the liver, but not in the in plasma, uh, or, or, I don't know, proteins uh, highly expressed in brain, but not expressed at all in testes, and so on and so forth. But that was not sufficient because you are not always interested in, in getting lists of proteins. You can also be interested in getting, um, uh, I don't know, PTMs or variant uh, lists. And so uh, we, we, we have to, 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 to do that, we have um, developed an advanced, advanced interface, which we call the snorkel interface. Uh, and that allows really to, to retrieve any data uh, that, that is in Nextprot in different formats. Uh, so, and, and which is super powerful because for example, you here this query can retrieve all the variants which are frequent and affect annotated PTN sites in seconds. In, uh, yeah, in 19 seconds, you have the result and the result is like, it is a table like that. And you can export this table in CSV or export the data in, uh, in JSON for your own uh, uh, usage. <laughs> so like for, the, for, for the, the other interface that I mentioned before, we want to help the user using that. And so we also provide a list of, uh, of queries already done and, and ready to be customized. And we also recently published a, a, a guide for beginners in Sparkle to help them to, to, to try and use Nextprot Sparkle endpoint. Uh, we have also a detailed uh, help pages where you have all the entities that are in Nextprot and examples of, of, uh, of uh, uh, queries uh, of um, uh, assignations. Uh, of those entities, and so you can easily, uh, so if you, you want to design your own query, you can refer to that, and uh, you, you will have a lot of examples, and you can play with that to write any uh, query you are interested in. Then in the very last part of my talk, I wanted to say a few words about um, the, what we in the HPP community call the dark proteome. So the dark proteome is, uh, uh, for the HP, HPP community is the proteins for which we, we know that they exist sometimes, not always, but we have absolutely no idea of what, what they are doing. And uh, this figure here was uh, some, uh, a joke figure that Amos uh, showed a lot uh, 10 years ago or 15 years ago, because at this time he said, basically we don't know the function of any protein. It was a bit provocative, <clears throat> but still, at, 10 years ago, 25% uh, of the human proteome had no function annotated. And one thing that I wanted to do now is, was to, to check if this figure was still true now. And so uh, I wanted to, find, to use Nextprot to find the proteins with unknown function. But that's not so trivial because finally, what is a protein with a known function. It's not, not very easy to retrieve because the functional information in Uniprot or in Nextprot is scattered in different fields and is not organized the same way. So basically a functional annotation can be something annotated from a paper, an experimental fact. It can be something predicted by a tool because the you know that the protein has this particular domain or so 
the protein must have this activity, that will be a functional annotation. Some of these annotations are um, high confidence, so we call them gold, some others are silver. Some are from NextProt curators, some are we, we integrate from other resources, such as Uniprot. And we also have some pathway annotations, so we don't know the precise function of the protein, but we know that the protein belongs to a pathway that does that in the cell. And we also have some, so all this information can come from different databases and different um, uh, annotation path. And some are structured, so some are go terms, basically, or structured pathway terms. But some are free text. When a, a Swiss prod curator uh, wants to explain what is the function of a protein, he writes a summary that can be a half a page saying, ah, this protein is doing that in this particular cell and this particular tissue, and, and it's not structured. So we had to, re so that's an example here. Uh, you have this protein with a nice text from Swiss prod with a list of different go terms of different uh, pathway uh, cake pathway, reactome pathway terms. Uh, you have some silver annotations, some gold annotations, which are specific. And you also have some go terms, for example, protein binding, that are not really functional terms. So it's quite uh, generic terms that are not uh, indicative of, of a particular function. For example, identical protein binding means that the protein makes dimers in your cells, but that does not tell you anything about the, pro the protein's function. So in fact, to retrieve the protein without function, we have to, to take all this into account. And we uh, designed a, a specific Sparkle query uh, asking for all the proteins that have uh, no go, only uh, no go term or only go terms, meaningless go terms in terms of function, uh, and with no free text, no pathway annotation, et cetera. And uh, by doing this, and applying this query to the last release, we have 2,222 proteins for which we don't have any clue about their function. And for HPP, that's the dark proteome. And they just launched a new initiative across all the, the labs participating to HPP, uh, calling people with uh, experience in uh, functionalizing and characterizing proteins to help in finding their function. So it's, it was published in 2018 and people are starting to develop new projects around this, uh, to, around this call. So to, in order to help uh, to, to cast a bit of light on those proteins, we, we, tried, we, we took the, this list of 2000 proteins and we, we had a look of what other information is in those entries. Because sometimes you don't know about the function of a protein, but you know that the protein is only expressed in a particular cell or only exp expressed in a particular organ at this stage of development. Or you know that the protein is interacting with another protein which is known, which has a known function. Or you know that the protein is uh, located in, uh, for example, the mitochondria, so maybe it has a, a role in, uh, in the energetic processes of the cell. And so all this information can give clues about the function of those proteins. So we developed a number of Sparkle queries, and using those Sparkle queries, we saw that 90% of the unknown proteins have an ortholog in mouse, so that, and, and many of them have uh, mice knockouts. So maybe by mining the information in the obtained in mice, we can get clues on the function of those proteins in human. Uh, half of them have information about their septal location. A uh, third of them have information about the protein-protein interaction that they are doing. And many, and, and no, 25% of them have tools to study them, so have at least two antibodies available in HPA, have plenty of expression data, and so on and so forth. And so we manually went one by one on those proteins here, using all these uh, queries. And at the end, we proposed some functional hypothesis for 26 of those proteins. And of course, these hypotheses need now to be experimentally verified by labs before they can be uh, annotated in NextProt and in, in other databases. Well, 
of course, Nextprod does not contain everything. So I, I told you about what we have, but uh, we, there are a lot of things that we don't have, namely phylogenetic information, data on model organisms, because we are strictly on human, pharmacology data, structural data, uh, interactions of the human proteins with pathogens, etc. And we are a very small team and we cannot integrate uh, all this data from all these fields in Nextprot. So what we, our plan is to, to use uh, the, this, the, the beauty of the RDF and uh, Sparkle system to connect Nextprot with other resources that have this information. And we, the, the beauty of the system is that we can build what we call federated queries that query at once the data that is in Nextprot with the data that is in other databases, and in seconds can uh, merge this data and give you the results you need. And so we developed different federated queries with different databases, such as DragBank, Campbell, Uniprot, REA for the enzymatic reactions, Wikipathways, DisGenet, and we can think of plenty of others of this data. So this is just an example uh, of a federated query between Nextprot and Wikipathways that gives you all the pathways that are, so that, um, the, all the pathways that have at least one protein from the mitochondrial matrix. And in, in uh, uh, so, so this is quite easy to obtain uh, using a federated query, but in fact, the information uh, about the, the subcellular location of protein is absent in wiki pathways, and we don't have all the information about, about pathways in Nextprot. So that's a good way of uh, filling gaps that are in, in Nextprot. And another uh, um, way to go further uh, that we envision is to use other tools developed by the communities to complement the tools that we have in Nextprot. And uh, so that's uh, the first example that we, of integration that we did last year. Uh, this is, this ITA cofactor tool is a tool designed by uh, a group in uh, at the University of Michigan, uh, and it's a, basically it's a tool uh, that predicts the function of proteins based on structural information, and uh, so the the tool has been tested. The tool works, and uh, it, it works in stand in a stand alone mode. But they wanted us to integrate uh, their tool, so to 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 put it. Uh, to, to gain audience and to gain users. So here we have a section about community tools. And when you, you go to a particular tool, then you, the tool here is not ours, but the tool, another tool, and you, but it's, it, it is interactive and it's integrated in, in Nextprot. So, so it, for the user it's transparent if you are in Nextprot or if you're, you are in this, uh, in this tool. So it's just an example and uh, of course, if you, you can think of other tools uh, that would give a complementary information of human proteins from what is already in Nextprot, then we can, um, uh, so it's quite easy to plug an external tool to the other community tools that we have here. So don't hesitate to come here, to come to me and, uh, and to ask and to contact the, the developer team here. So we are present, uh, so, I, re I remind you our uh, website address here. We have a Twitter account, a ResearchGate account, and uh, myself, I will be here until uh, Friday morning. So I will be very pleased to discuss with any of you of any possible idea of nice stuff to, to put or to connect with Nextprot. Thank you. And so for RNA seq, there are lots of different databases uh, and lots of different data sets are coming. But HPA is taking them all and reanalyzing them all. And the data that we have.
takes into account GTEx, Phantom, all these uh, all these different projects. So so our data is already a merge of all those. And then for antibody-based expression, I don't know of particular other resource than HPA, but I would be pleased to 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 see. And if you have other ideas, I would be very happy to to discuss with you. Uh, in our previous talk, Erla told us a lot about uh, combinatorial PGMs and how you can them. How easy would it be to find a combinatorial PGM to next plot and get a lot of expression data sets to PR comparing for the domain? That's a, that's a tricky question that we had from the beginning of next plot. We would very much like to. Of granularity that we have is a slice of the form, but we wanted to go in the at the next step to the proteoform level and to be able to annotate everything at the level of a particular proteoform defined by a combination of PTMs and variants and so on. Technically, the model is there; we we can do it, but uh, the 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 we don't know exactly how to implement it and and how to and in if uh, yeah we 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 really need to think. Um, on the best way to do it because uh, there is a lot of information there. We already have a lot of information of combinatorial thing. We uh, at SwissProt a few years ago we had a, they had a, a project of histone annotation, and we have the information, but at the moment it's not really well uh, structured. But it would be possible to structure it. But uh, we we need ways of visualizing that, and we are not very expert in. Uh, in how to visualize that now that we have everything uh, in the back end. So, so if you have uh, suggestions, ideas to model that, it would be very nice. It's possible, but we don't have all the data. <laughs> so that's a problem. But, uh, uh, depends. Uh, so the Depends. The phospho, the phosphorylation data comes mostly from the phospho build of uh, the reanalysis that Eric did a few years ago, but we will update it soon. For the rest, for the very particular cases, like the histones, th that has been annotated manually uh, at SwissProt or in our team from papers, individual papers. And so uh, you have, uh, for some proteins where you have this crosstalk, it's, you have uh, this modification occurring only with that one uh, it's, it's de described in in the feature table in the in the feature description and it's come from it's manually curated from papers up to now um, speaking about retrieval can you elaborate on how you uh, can retrieve data from just the command line for example can you just uh, post an http request and um, with this Sparkle language, for example, then um, you need to log in. No, uh, there is no login. Uh, all the, here in the technical corner, you have all the, if you go to this page, uh, it's, so if you go to Snorkel, the Snorkel interface, you have a, no, not, not that one, sorry, uh, that one. Uh, here. In the in the help, you have a, the, what we call the technical corner, and you have all the um, the the details of how to to retrieve uh, to, how to use the Sparkle endpoint uh, as a developer, how to use the API, how to retrieve any piece of information about Nextprot. Um, so, in principle, it's quite well documented. But if if you miss something, just ask. I have a question for you. Uh, so, with uh, sometimes with the database search, uh, we have problem with uh, next block or other tools. <laughs> no, do there are some tools in the, the site we try to elaborate, manipulate, quantify to have some yeah. parts of the each entries to be adapted to the search and the search and time. Yeah, I the problem you mentioned so so we we distribute a fast file yeah. and and a path file of, of uh, all our sequences and and for the path with the annotations so FASTA is a very generic format yeah. but we don't use exact the exact same header as uniprot does because for example uniprot precises the, the species 
Yes. We don't need to specify the species because all is in human and, and things like that. So the header of our FASTA file is not ex the exact same as the one of Uniprot. So apparently some, I don't know all, but some of the tools that you might use are so well conditioned <laughs> to yes. use Uniprot that they, they refuse FASTA files that, are, that don't have the exact same uh, header than, than Uniprot. But that's something that they should quite easily solve uh, and I don't know what we could do on, on our side because we don't want to put a human, uh, well, we don't want, yes. uh, we don't find it's very, it very convenient to put uh, information that is not relevant for Nextprot just because Uniprot, it's relevant for Uniprot. So that's kind of problems because the Uniprot uh, is uh, uh, a lot older than us. And so lots of tools have been built on Uniprot and they crash when they receive something that is not exactly the same, but it should be solved. And, but on the con on, on, in contrast, uh, some, of, some of the tools now start to use the PEF uh, format. And uh, so we were, the, I don't know if Uniprot distributes it now or not. Uh, for, for a moment, we were the only ones to do it. And um, so, so it's on, on both ways. It's a means of uh, updating the software. 